This is the desktop and this is exactly like most other desktops. You can click and drag, you can right click, create folder, create launcher or create shortcut. Create document, right now you can only create an empty file which is like a text file. Uh, organize desktop by name, like auto arrange by name. And then there's keep a lined. This will keep it in more of a grid fashion. And then there's change desktop background. If you want to change what that looks like. Um, one quick thing, when you right click on files, most of this is going to look very familiar. You have open with text editor because this is a text file. Open with open office.org word processor. Open with other application. Cut, copy, make link or make shortcut. Rename, copy to with some choices move to with some choices, move to trash, which is like delete, resize icon. I'm going to stop here. Resize icon is very cool. You click it, you get four dots on the four corners. You can then make your icon huge. When I have a little task to do, I just make a fake document and say milk. And then when I'm working throughout the night and I close the window, I see this huge file staring at me and it says milk. So I know I need to go get milk. And then when I'm done, I just go delete the file. Uh, we're going to right click this file. We're going to have an extra choice, which is restore icons, original size. I like this. Click it. Now it's back to normal. Very nice. Very convenient. You don't have to click and drag to try to get it right. It just goes back to right. Now let me explain what this actually is. The only way I can explain this is, this is kind of like Windows Update, but it's not. It's kind of like in Windows, you have add, remove programs, but in that application, you really can't add programs. Think of this as a global catalog of all the software that's tested and vetted with this operating system. Think of this as download.com or snapfiles.com or whatever your favorite Windows site is to go find applications, but it's in your operating system. It's actually a part of your operating system. It gets updated like Windows updates. And another huge plus is if a piece of software, for instance, Firefox or let's say OpenShot or anything else gets updated, Ubuntu Software Center or Synaptic Package Manager will automatically launch an application called Update Manager, and it will update every single part of your computer for security fixes, enhancements to software, additional software will be updated in that list. This is what sets it apart. The, one of the things that makes it much more secure is you have in line in the operating system cooperation with all of the software developers to try to keep everything up to date, running well, and secure. That's gold. Underneath preferences, you have add administration. It isn't as deep, but many, many customizations and tools from here. Everything from additional drivers for your video or for your Wi-Fi or for your NIC. Computer janitor, which is like disk cleanup. If you want to get rid of packages on your computer that you don't need anymore. Disk utility, look at your hard drive, login screen, printer setup, startup disk creator. You simply put in a USB drive and this will allow you to make a bootable USB drive from your operating system. Very nice, very flexible. Here's the update manager. This will periodically pop up every two to three days, not the first Tuesday of the month or second Tuesday of the month or the third Thursday of the month or anything like that. But whenever there's an update, why be locked into a date range of when there's an update? To, why don't you give me an update when people make updates available? Now, I did not do updates when I did the install, so there's 289 available updates, which totals only 293 megabytes. Most Windows updates, I can tell you, you have four to five updates and it's an easy 100 megabytes. This is 289 and it's only 293 meg. I think that's amazing. We will do this update a little bit later. Next thing I wanted to focus on was this panel bar itself and some of the other stuff in here. Firefox icon built right in. If you right click any of these things, it's customizable. 
you can edit the menu, you can remove from panel, or you can unlock this. Uh, for instance, this Firefox icon, I don't want this right here. I'm gonna unlock it, go back, move it. I can simply drag it over here, click it, and it's gone. Now I can lock it over to this side. Very easy to move, very easy to do. We have um, your typical notification type tray where you have your network status, your volume, where if you go into the volume settings, sound preferences, you can customize how that is. Uh, here is your email menu and your um, chat menu. If you turn on the default chat client, uh, it will automatically set this menu up to interact with that. Same thing if you use Evolution for your email, which is the built-in email client. This menu will integrate with the notifications from that application, so it's in one centralized place. Uh, there is your calendar and your time. Next to it is called the Me menu, to where you can set your um, status. Just like Twitter or Skype, you can say, I'm away, I'm busy, I'm available. This can integrate with the Empathy chat client and do the exact same kind of thing. This also is how you link with Ubuntu One. Next to that, we have the Power menu. Lockdown, guest sessions, switch from user, log out, suspend, hibernate, restart, shutdown. I'm going to go into guest session later. If someone comes over and you don't want them messing with your computer or your significant other isn't great at computers and you don't want them to mess anything up, quite simply go up to the power button guest session and it will launch a brand new read only session where they can't change anything and your session will be truly running the whole time. Uh, down here we have a show desktop window. So if we just launch Firefox real quick, hit this little desktop, there's our desktop, click it again, everything comes back up. Right next to that, we have a active window list, just like in Task Manager. Uh, so if I had something else running, you'll see down here, we have two applications running side by side. Uh, and over here, we have what's very new to most Windows users. Linux users will take a little bit of time for you to grasp. These are multiple desktops, and I don't mean desktops, I mean environments. Right here on this first desktop, you can clearly see a Firefox icon. If I come over here, there's no Firefox. There isn't even a task listing saying Firefox. I'm truly in a different environment. Right now we have forums set up. That's the default. If I right click on this and go to preferences, I can change the number of desktops. I think I can go up to something like 120. And you can see down here we have all these desktops. I don't know who needs 120, but you can do it if you want. We're going to bring it back down to a reasonable number. Sometimes I go as high as six. We're going to go back to four. And if I just hover over it, you'll see click to switch to workspace four. Now if I click on Firefox and I come down here, you will see click and start dragging Ubuntu Start Center Firefox. I can literally from down here click on Firefox and I can drag it to a different desktop. I think that's cool. Same thing if I come over here, I can click and drag the calculator to a different desktop. Then if I go to these desktops, I have those applications. I personally think that's very cool. It enhances efficiency when I use a computer. Now here's where you get into a little bit of power. These panel bars, like taskbars in Windows, are infinitely customizable just about. You can right click them and say add to panel. A lot of things are here. Uh, by default, here's all the things built in that you can add. These are applets. You can add a workspace switcher, which is like down here, a window switcher down here, window list, weather report, user switcher, Tommy Boyd notes, system monitor, on and on and on, a whole bunch of things, and you can get many, 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 many more. I like this system monitor. I'm going to show you this one as a good example of being customizable. You can either double click it or highlight it and click add. Now up here, we have one little thing, and it's a process meter that doesn't look very useful. Okay, here's where you get good. 
right click it and you can go down to preferences. When you're in preferences, you can click memory, network, swap space, which is like a page file or virtual memory load how much load is on the computer or hard disk activity now we have all these meters updating every split second about what is right now the activity on your computer the health of your computer how much is it being used again you can simply right click go to preferences you can change the color settings in every way you can how thick is this meter so for instance when it comes to a uh, network we might want to see extra history uh, i can make it wider now they're all a little bit wider change the custom change how frequently they're updated very versatile if you right click you also see open system monitor or if you just single click it this is what the windows users would look at as being the task manager this all might be a little overwhelming to the new user but i highly encourage you to dabble now, if you want to dabble and you're afraid you're going to break something, quite simply go to the power button and go to guest session. You can't break anything. It's gold. I love it. Whenever I want to test something, I'm not quite sure how it's going to act or react on my computer. I go to guest session. I know this was a little long, but this was truly only the basic basic of everything you can do in this operating system. We're going to move on to something even better.